Oh, it's as easy as that. Goodbye, Rock. Oh, yes, you dodged that sword. But look out, it's the crate of Yorkshire tea. Oh, it always wins. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we are playing Sid Meier's Pirates. That's right, this is one of the greatest games in existence. I'm pretty sure it was released around 2004, and trust me, this game is hands down the best pirate game ever. Assassin's Creed Black Flag has absolutely no nothing on the majesty that is Sid Meier's Pirates. This game has it all. It has swashbuckling heroics and it also has the English fighting against their famous naval enemies. The French and the Spanish and the Dutch and also some of the English. Uh, but you know, it's that classic pirate experience. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be demonstrating just how perfectly balanced this game is. So make sure you set back, you're relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea as I've ruined your nostalgic memories of this beautiful Sid Meier's game. So let's Let's dive into a brand new game of Sid Meier's Pirates. Ah, the glorious cutscenes. Basically, the storyline is you are a small child whose family has been devastated and stolen away, and it's up to you to get your entire family back together again. And lo and behold, it's up to evil pirate man who stole away our family. Yep, of course, evil eye patch dude. Anyway, we've now grown up a little bit, and we're going to seek passage to the new world to make some sweet, sweet money. Ah, let us sign our way up. What's a glorious pirate name? In fact, just what's the name of a very powerful being? Someone really skilled with swordsmanship. Oh my goodness, of course. It's the legendary Senri Havel, a trained adventurer who will be absolutely perfect for our journey. Now, naturally, we're going to go for the adventurer difficulty, and you 100% trust me, want to put your skill into fencing. It's very much necessary, as fencing in this game is completely utterly broken. Trust me, it's uh, just absolutely bonkers what you can do with a skill at fencing. You don't need any other skills in the game. So we're going to become a good fencer and we're going to start in the 1660 start date. Anyway, bam, now we need to decide which faction we want to join at the start. The Spanish, the Dutch, the French, or this lovely English person. Ladies and gentlemen, who do you think the Spiffing Brit will pick? A, the evil Spanish, B, the evil Dutch, C, the evil French, or D, the majestically fantastic wonderful English people? Did I make it too obvious? Maybe. Maybe I made it a bit too obvious. Hopefully you got it correct in the comment section. Be surprised how many people get it wrong. Anyway, the story is pretty simple. There's basically a mutiny and we become the pirate captain now. And so our story begins. We're in the English capital of St. Kitts. It's a pretty small little port and we find ourselves in the glorious world of Sid Meier's Pirates. Now this game might not look too graphically beautiful, but trust me, this game still actually holds up ridiculously well today. Sure, it can't actually run in widescreen, but it is a perfect game. The story is pretty simple and the world map is absolutely massive. It's huge. There's settlements all around here for us to visit, and at the moment we're only over here. But there's so much of the world to see. And there's also an absolutely fantastic list of pirates to defeat as well. We are currently the 10th highest ranked pirate in the world. Up at the top we've got Henry Morgan and Blackbeard, who we can find out and about in the world and actually defeat. Then there's treasure maps, a piratopedia, and also our personal status. As you can see, we have nothing. No gold, no land. We are a effectively pathetic. However, we're going to become absolutely amazing in a very short period of time. Now the game really wants us to follow a pretty standard journey of trying to find our way in the world, defeat better ships when we have bigger ships, use cannons, use combat, and do all of that majestic stuff to actually give ourselves a better chance. Instead, no, we're going to cheese the entire system. First, pay visit to the governor and pledge allegiance to the British. Ah yes, the governor tells us that we're at war with the evil Spanish and slimy French and the greedy Dutch. Of course, the English are at war of all three. Of course they are. And now we've been given a little letter saying that we can plunder and sink them for fun. Let's quickly visit the tavern as well and pick up some extra crew. There we go, an extra 26 dudes, they'll be necessary. And instead of actually staying around to try and fight people, we're going to head south. Now south is very important because down south there are some very unique individuals. You see, down south there are natives and of course trust the spiffing Brit to immediately make a beeline to the native populations of this game. But the natives have actually access to the strong ship in the game, and a lot of actual veteran players don't realise this. As fun as it would be to grab a massive galleon straight out of the bat, there are much better ships. Ah, and there it is, the Indian War Canoe. We must quickly chase it. Now the Indian War Canoe is the best ship in the entire game. You might be wondering why that is. Well, we're going to have to take one to then demonstrate. As you can see, the Indian War Canoe is over here, and it's immediately trying to outrun us. And look at it go, it's doing 14 knots at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. 
one. Oh my god, this thing is going to be such a pain to actually get. Come back, Indian war canoe. We might not actually be able to catch it. We may or may not need some more sails. Oh my god, Indian war canoe. Look at it go, it can just bloody teleport. All right, let's get nice and close to the war canoe again. And it's fight time, perfect, yes. And we fire our shots, okay. I immediately miss them, of course. Our only chance of defeating the war canoe is somehow landing a chain shot. Oh my god, the war canoe is going to get away again. This bloody war canoe. All right, we're going to have to visit some ports and try and get access to a faster ship. These classic war canoes. Now, these shipwrights around here can actually upgrade our ships. However, they just need money. So we need to find a way of getting money. Now, the easiest way to get money would be to find a big ship with stuff on it. Like, for example, this massive Dutch ship here. The Dutch ship has 38 men on board and 8 guns. Technically speaking, the Dutch ship here should actually stand a very decent chance of defeating our ship. However, I am the Spiffing Brit, king of cheese of the game, and instead of actually doing ship combat, we are instead just going to sail headfirst into the ship. Now, by sailing into the ship, our ships collide with a mighty crash, and so I must now defeat the enemy captain in sword combat. This is where the exploiting can begin. Do we go for the rapier, the longsword, or the cutlass? You're probably going to want to pick the rapier. Now, the thing is, the actual combat in this game is meant to have kind of like a complicated system of balancing defenses off of various other things. So, he might attack and I should do a jump, that sort of thing. So, there are effectively three attacks in this game and three defensive moves. Each one perfectly counters the other. There is one exception to this, the thrust attack. If my enemy is to do a chop attack, my thrust attack is so fast that it immediately interrupts. If he's to do a slash, the same thing occurs. If we both do a thrust at the same time, however, we simply parry each other. This basically means that the entire combat of this game can be put down to spamming the number 4 key, as this perfectly means that the enemy cannot fight back. And this allows us to raid their ship and get 71 goods in total. A thank you very much, I'll be keeping this entire thing. So we capture a brand new ship, get a bunch of gold, and we have a ship with no damage whatsoever just added to our fleet. Now let's sail on over to an English port. We're going to meet up with that shipwright, and we get to sell this ship for 450 gold, provided we get rid of the cargo. So let's sell all of these goods. Wabam, now 600 gold, and we sell our new ship. So there we go, that's a little bit of money added to us. Now we just simply need to find the location of getting a faster ship. Ah, perfect. In Barbados, we have located the upgrade for cotton sails. This allows our ship to go even faster, and it's a very important thing if we're ever going to capture one of those tiny little speedy boats. So immediately, we're going to leave this place and try and find ourselves another Indian war canoe. And my goodness, we are a smidge faster now. Oh my, though. It's a Spanish treasure ship. This is exactly what I'd love to find. Perfect. So we're going to jump in and attack the Spanish treasure ship. Treasure ships, of course, very famous for carrying ridiculous amounts of goods. We're going to use our increased speed and mobility to get in very close and dodge all of the cannon shots. Wabam! Let's attack a treasure ship. Now it's time for more ship combat. We actually have absolutely no right of winning this, but lo and behold, uh, this game's broken, so we can just keep thrusting into this dude. Yep, you just wait for him to attack and then just thrust. Ah, oh, it's as easy as that. And we are going to lose most of our crew here, but you know, these things happen. And perfect, there we go. The treasure captain has been defeated. Our crew is victorious, although there's not really too much of us left. I'm gonna need to hire some more dudes. Oh my. Ah, there we go. 18 of them volunteer aboard. Welcome. We managed to plunder a sweet 2,000 gold, and uh, we're gonna be stealing all of this, and we're gonna be keeping the ship. Let's sail this bad boy right back to Barbados. This is a lot of money right here. And we're going to also talk to the governor, who should actually be very happy that Senri Havel has attacked the Spanish and the French. There we go, I've been promoted to the rank of captain, meaning I can now recruit easier, and I've been given a massive estate. Oh my, and the governor's rather plain looking daughter wants to invite me to the Grand Ball. Um, I'm going to beat a hasty retreat. I'm afraid Senri Havel, he has standards. Now let's sell all of the stuff we stole. Oh my god, we have 54 tons of spice, and spice sells for 45 gold. Yep, okay, we are going to bankrupt the merchants here. We've also discovered the Baron Raimondo, who's very evil, is located over here and has information regarding our sister, I do believe. Fantastic. All right, let us sail away and find one of those Indian war canoes. Trust me, they're very important. They're the most important part of this game. Only true elite mega gamers use them. Ah, oh, there we go. There's an Indian war canoe. My goodness, there's actually a couple of Indian war canoes. This is perfect. Okay, this Indian war canoe is on its way to Gibraltar. Lovely. We are sadly getting slowed down by the fact that one of our ships sailed into a rock because it's a massive melon. Right, now, how to do combat correctly. Always attack a ship on the right-hand side. Trust me on this one, because for some reason, the wind in this game always goes east to west, meaning 
saying you always attack from the left and you always win. And so we're bam. As you can see, the wind is coming from the east, so we immediately turn ourselves around and we should be able to outspeed the Indian war canoe, finally. This is our one chance to capture the war canoe. All we need to do is to touch it and then we can get the boarding action. All right, there we go, go for the board, go for the board. Yes, the war canoe, they immediately surrender. Oh, we're going to keep her. We are going to keep this amazing ship. My goodness, you guys have no idea just how powerful this ship is. Right, we're gonna keep the war canoe and uh, the war canoe is actually immediately going to become our flagship. Hello, war canoe. You want to be called Infante? No, you are mega ship. Mega ship is quite possibly the greatest ship in the entire known universe. Right, and now with our fantastic Indian war canoe, we're going to be upgrading this bad boy so that it becomes the most powerful fighting vessel in the known universe. Doing so is not really a challenge, if I'm honest. Luckily, over here in Plage Noir, a pirate heaven, we've discovered a shipwright who can upgrade our ship with triple hammocks. This means our ship can carry twice as many crew, basically meaning we can fight better. Oh, and also, we have a bunch of guns here, but uh, we no longer need guns. We don't actually want to fight ships with guns. Guns are completely and utterly useless for what we have planned. Now anyway, time for us to sail away. And just look at how fast we can sail away. Even though we are actually sailing not into the wind, we are able to go 15 knots. And this isn't even our top speed. You see, we can go over to Barbados here and get our sails upgraded. Well, bam, cotton sails. Perfect. We have now created the greatest ship physically possible. Right, we are now sailing roughly into the wind, so we are going to go very quickly, very shortly. And I think it's time we locate a very powerful pirate or someone like that to try and fight for fun. I mean, at this point, we can defeat every single enemy in the entire game. So yes, let's attack a Spanish trade galleon and their escort. Well, bam. So we are, of course, a Indian war canoe. And because of that, we are able to dodge every single shot that they fire at us. We have a crew of 75 and we have the perfect ability to just board everything. What do you do when you board? Well, of course, you just spam the thrust attack. It's as easy as that. These merchants are not meant to be fighting glorious combat pirates. Ah, oh, this is going to be easy. And perfect, another glorious combat thanks to the legendary thrust maneuver. Oh, Senri Havel, he can thrust all he likes. What a charming chappy. And the best thing is we can technically also keep this ship if we want. Can store 170 tons, it's got a bunch of goods, we might as well take it all. And thanks for the thousand gold as well. Majestic, that's a Spanish ship just for us. Oh, and we've decided to attack yet another tiny French ship. This time it's even smaller. These guys have absolutely nothing. What an easy fight this is going to be as well. The thing is, with our current setup, we can actually take on things like massive French war galleons if we wanted. We can take on the strongest ships in the entire game after literally just starting out and technically using the smallest and weakest ship the game has to offer. But it's not small and weak. It is the most powerful. A ship does not need cannons in this game. Whilst the game might want you to think that you want to be running around with a massive 36 cannon ship of the line with the ability to smash down massive Spanish trade ships, you don't. You just want a tiny canoe which can go almost at the speed of sound. It's perfect. Anyway, we're bam, another ship captured. Let's take this all the way over to port. We have captured a lot of ships now. My goodness, look at this procession. Oh my, a French ship transporting a new governor. Oh, we definitely can't let that one land. So governors can improve the local economy of an area. However, if we simply just stop the governor ever getting there in the first place, we make the lives of the English a little bit easier. So allow me to make it so the governor just accidentally was attacked at sea. I absolutely love Sid Meier's Pirates. This is one of the best games ever made, in my opinion. It's classic. It's got an infinite quantity of replayability. It's just fun, genuinely. One of those amazing games. I'd be interested to hear your opinions on it, whether you did play it. I mean, if you genuinely have never played Sid Meier's Pirates in your life, 100% go back and give it a try. It is amazing, really, really worth it. There is no other game quite like it. Well, bam, another glorious success. I had another ship for us to steal. Perfect, the uh, French governor just accidentally did not make it. What a shame. I wonder if the governor would like to give me an upgrade, of course. Ah, oh, fantastic, I've been upgraded to major. Oh, and my estate has been upgraded. Oh, and you introduced me to yet another rather plain daughter. Uh, it's time to escape from here. And of course, we need to hire some more crew, lovely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be selling off most of these ships because we don't actually 
actually need anywhere near as many ships as this, but we'll keep our fantastic group of free ships. Oh, and there's also a fantastic person on this smuggler over here who we do believe is carrying an important member of the crew. So we're going to naturally attack him, steal him. And for some reason, once again, the wind is always from east to west, meaning we have ridiculous speed. Just look at how maneuverable we are. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness. Boats can't do this game. They really can't. I just love this game. It's great fun. Anyway, once again, just attack the poor little Spanish man who does not quite yet know how to fight. And it's as easy as that. Perfect. And of course, we're just going to steal away all of the loot. Perfect stuff. A new ship is added to our fleet. Right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit more time has passed in the game. As you can see, we now have 180 crew members. Now, you might be wondering why on earth do we have 180 crew members? And quite simply, it's because we have our mega war canoe, the mega ship, the greatest ship. It can fit 75 guys on it, so we're going to put 75 guys on it. And then we have a massive brig just simply to follow the war canoe around with. Anyway, I think it's time we go defeat the evil Baron Raimondo, so let's sail straight south and find that cheeky man. I think we've certainly got a large enough amount of dudes. I think this is a fantastic time in order to do it. Oh my god, this war canoe is so quick. It can just literally teleport around the map. It's so good. Anyway, there's a trade galleon over there, and I'm pretty sure that chip in front of it is the evil Baron Raimondo. So let me quickly visit the tavern and see if we have anything special. Nope, that's useful. So extra dudes, sure, I'll recruit those. And job done. I think we've got everything we need to defeat the evil Baron Raimondo. Right, there you are, Raimondo. Time for you to die. Not gonna let you get into port. Come here. Right, bam. Oh wait, no, that's not Raimondo. Where's Raimondo? Give me Raimondo back. God damn it, trade galleon. There we go, Raimondo's back. And he is back in action. And let's get nice and close. We will catch you, Raimondo. Your ship is very slow in comparison. Right, the chase is on, ladies and gentlemen. All we have to do is dodge all of Raimondo's shots like so, and we're going to initiate the boarding procedure. Do, 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 do. Ah, boarding. Okay, it's time to fight the evil Baron Raimondo. Remember, this is meant to be a bit of a challenge, but no, we're going to choose the rapier. Ah, evil Baron Raimondo emerges from below deck. We've found him. Let the fight begin. He misses his pistol shot. I land mine, giving me an early advantage. Oh, Raimondo, that classic evil Spanish dude. Oh, yes, we just hit you with the triple thrust, and that's all Senri Havel needs. Oh, another thrust, and another thrust, and another one. Oh, and it's as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God, we just hit with five consecutive thrusts. Wow, you are a master swordsman. Sir, I will reveal the truth to you. Master swordsman, hmm. We only have one attack move. Okay. You know what? That's fine. Master Swordsman, we are. You know, we've discovered some information about our lost sister, apparently. Thanks, Baron Raimondo. Oh, my God. And we've got your entire ship, which is a war galleon. Yeah, it's a Spanish war galleon, which is completely kitted out. This is technically the most powerful ship in the game from, like, a technical level. My God, that is ridiculous. Because we can now just select the war galleon. You can fit 300 guys on it, sail it into war, and just take anything. Oh, my God. You know, we might as well show it off. Let's, uh, let's attack a fast galleon with a bunch of payroll on it. Wabam! Oh my god, so many cannons! Just fire them all! Oh. Right, and grape shot to defeat the crew. Wabam. Oh, sweet, sweet grape shot. Oh, that's a dead crew. Let's get rid of those sails as well. We don't want them having fun. Oh my goodness, and they just immediately surrender. That's how awesome we are in our mega war galleon. Thank you so much. Right, I'm just going to sink you and take everything you have. Thanks for the 500 gold, Mr. War Galleon. Majestic. Oh, I love this game. It's so good. You know what, let's go kill the uh, seventh highest ranked pirate in the world. He's somewhere north. Oh, and also because the war galleon's slow, just switch out to the war canoe. It's it's so much faster. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This game I have absolutely fantastic memories of. I would be very interested to hear how you actually first thought about this game when you first played it, because I have so many fantastic, happy memories of this game. They're just, it's genuinely just one of the few perfect games where anyone can sit down and play it and it is almost guaranteed fun. It's quite easily one of the best games ever made. And if you haven't experienced it yet, give it a try. You're really missing out. The seventh most evil pirate should be around here somewhere. Oh, there he is. It's Rock. Rock Brasilinho. He's the Dread Pirate. Lovely. Now, I mean, of course, we could attack in the War Canoe, or we could just switch out to the Mega War Galleon. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's so powerful. What's this? The Pirate Royal Sloop Bloody Delight. It's got 16 guns and 111 dudes. Well, allow me to present to you a Spanish War Galleon. A yeet. Oh, wait. I'm so bad at aiming. Right. The pirate ship has decided to board us and is trying to attack us. Uh, so don't worry. We're going to hit this 
this pirate dude with the greatest attack he's ever seen. I'm sorry, Rock. Uh, allow me to present to you my infinite thrust attack. It's so perfectly balanced. Oh, this game. Oh, it's as easy as that. Goodbye, Rock. Oh, yes, you dodge that sword. But look out. It's the crate of Yorkshire tea. Oh, it always wins. Easy success, ladies and gentlemen. We have won the pirate wars and picked up 3,200 gold pieces along the way. Good lord. That's a lot of gold. Oh, that's now also upgraded me to be the eighth greatest pirate in the world. Fantastic. Uh, I think it's safe to say we've basically won the game at this point. We have a 237 strong crew, an infinite quantity of gold, and we can take on just about anything we want, either in our very quick versatile war canoe to pin ships down, or in our massively ridiculous war galleon. Oh, I love this game. I really do. Anyway, by the time this video probably comes out, it's going to be Christmas Day, and so I want to wish all of you out there a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for supporting this channel. If it's your first year supporting this channel, amazing. Hats off to you. Maybe it's not. Either way, it's been absolutely wonderful having you along the way. And hey, here's to another year with you on board. Make sure to go refill your cup of tea and give it a quick salute, by the way. Those are the legal requirements. Okay, apparently the evil Baron Raimondo has even more information regarding my sister. So I have to travel all the way across the world again to kill evil Baron Raimondo for a second time. You think he'd be a bit less suspicious if he didn't actually have evil in his name. Right, hopefully we have evil Baron Raimondo hiding right in this city. Okay, he's on the war galleon Marquesa and he's literally just around the corner. He's headed for Margarita. All right, we're going to head south and try and capture evil Baron Raimondo. Oh, there he is. It's evil Baron Raimondo. Now, I mean, we could fight on the war canoe or we could just switch out to the massive war galleon, which has more people on board, basically just making the fight a whole lot easier. Anyway, evil Baron Raimondo, it's time to fight yet again. Uh, da, 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 da. Your ship sucks, mine shall win. So there's a slight issue, which is that both myself and Raimondo don't actually have any um, sails anymore, so we're kind of struggling to fight amongst each other. I'm going to have to basically try and catch up to him somehow. I'm not sure how, but I just need to wrap him. Apparently we're going one knot and he's going zero. So this is going to be a, a very slow chase, but a chase nonetheless. Maybe if, what, what happens if I just sink his galleon instead? All right, it's now going to probably take me about half an hour to actually pull up next to this Spanish war galleon, but eventually it's going to happen. My god, we're going to be here for a while. I've kind of reduced the crew of his ship to a uh, 15 at the moment. Um, I don't actually know if the game will allow me to get lower than what I've currently managed. Oh no, it's allowed me to get down to 12. Okay. Are we able to just sink the ship? No, we can't, because of course it's got a quest NPC on board. So the game really wants me to board it, even though I have no sails to get over there. Okay, there are six crew left. Please, just have them surrender or something. Free crew, come on game, come on. Two crew on board. It's literally Baron Raimondo and then just some other bloke. Okay, one crew member. It's just Baron Raimondo piloting that entire ship. Oh my god, Baron Raimondo. Right, I'm just going to have to sail away at a very slow speed to break the engagement. We've absolutely smashed Baron Raimondo ship left one crew member in it so um we're just gonna have to try and just get out of here pick our second ship and then do the fight again but this time with a ship with hopefully working sails oh there we go thank god we break away from the engagement right change ship we're now using the war canoe bring in the war canoe and fight Right, there we go. Immediately, it has no cannons, one crew. It's just Baron Raimondo. Oh, I'm so sorry, Baron Raimondo. What a poor guy. Oh, as your ship approaches, the enemy strikes the colors. Oh, thank goodness, they surrender. But of course they don't because it's this game. So even though the captain of the ship surrenders, Baron Raimondo is still below deck. Who are the people fighting in the background? Where? <laughs> what was the point of that, Baron Raimondo? You let me come on board to hit you once and then you're a master swordsman. Well done. You used the thrust move. I was not prepared for it. Please, I will tell you everything. Anyway, we're going to sink his ship. Thanks for the 3,000 gold and all the food. You're great, Baron Raimondo. Absolutely 11 out of 10. Best guy. All right, you know what? That's uh, that's the Sid Meier's Pirates experience right there. I hope you've truly just been demonstrated this glorious experience and just how fantastic it is. And I'm sure it's going to really make you want to jump back and play this game again. Just use infinite thrusts. Trust me. Oh, what a glorious experience. We managed to get Senri Havel up to being the eighth greatest pirate in the world. What an incredible dude. He's so 
so good. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit. If you've enjoyed watching this video, feel free to give it a like. And hey, if it's your first time here, why not consider subscribing? I'd absolutely love to have you joining our fantastic little community. And if you've been very interested in the way we've played Sid Meier's Paris today, then trust me, there are some very wacky videos on this channel, which you're going to absolutely love. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic Patreons who make these awesome and amazing videos all the more possible. Thank you very much, you lovely chappies. And hey, if you sat there wondering, hmm, I'm not sure which video I'd like to watch next. Well, don't worry. I've decided that you would probably love to watch this one right here. It's been hand chosen by myself to be absolutely majestic and perfect for you and only you. Oh, it's amazing. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.